Hey folks, today we're going to talk about site and product packages. Site packages are used to configure a site after it's been deployed. Product packages are the same as site packages with additional features enabled when a WooCommerce integration is activated. Product packages are also used to reconfigure a site when a user performs an upgrade or downgrade in their WooCommerce account. As you can see, you can have as many price packages as you like. And you can apply these packages when you create a new site, here's the list right here, or when a customer purchases a site subscription from your WooCommerce store. Here's a WooCommerce product that can use a, price pa uh, a site package. So let's take a look at what makes up a site package. We're gonna click here on the basic package and let's go through each of these sections one at a time. In the first section here, you can apply one or more app groups to a site. One example where you might use this is when a customer purchases a particular product and you want to tag each site with a label that lets you know which product that site is associated with. You'll also notice that there are two extra fields when users are upgrading or downgrading a package, or in this case, a product plan. You can then remove or add additional groups to the site record. In the next section, you've got the ability to activate and deactivate plugins if they're already in the site. So if a site was installed from a template, usually because a customer purchased a site subscription in a WooCommerce store, you can activate any of the pre-installed plugins or themes. This is especially useful because it allows you to set up a single template site but activate a different subset of plugins and teams dependent on the product being purchased. You can create a different site package for each product and specify a different set of plugins and teams to be activated. On new sites, that is sites that doesn't have anything else installed, you can designate which plugins to install in that new site. You can pull plugins from wordpress.org or you can pull them from a URL as long as that URL resolves to a plugin file that's a plugin.zip. On the flip side, you can also choose to deactivate plugins. Again, this is useful when the customer is changing a subscription plan. If they're downgrading, you might want to deactivate premium plugins. Or if they're upgrading, you might want to activate, deactivate certain plugins while activating others. You might want to deactivate, say, the uh, free plugin for uh, something like SEO and the premium plugin published by the same author. That's just a simple example for, for an upgrade. Downgrades are obviously more uh, direct because when you downgrade, there's a good chance you don't want customers to have access to certain premium plugins. Just as with plugins, you can install themes from WordPress.org or from a URL. And this is, a, again, this is especially useful for new sites. Now you might be wondering what use is WP config entry, site matters, WP options, and all, et cetera. With WP config entries, you can push information into the WP config file for a new site. Take the Fluent SMTP plugin, for example. That plugin can read email connection configuration from WP Config. So you can use this section to push email configuration data into new sites. Because of this, you can do some cool things such as pushing different email configurations for different products that a customer might have purchased. Site matters are a little bit different because site matters are not stored on the new site, it's stored in the record that WP Cloud Deploy keeps that references the new site. So for example, we can store a site meta with the site record that tells us what product the customer might have purchased and store additional information, for example, the year the customer might have purchased that product. With WP Options, you're pushing option information into the new site. This is useful if you know 
let's say the license and option field for a plugin and you want to store the license and configuration for that plugin. Or if you want to push configuration data for a plugin where you know, or theme where you know the uh, option field. PHP workers and all the other PHP configuration information is really useful when you're trying to provide different performance uh, metrics for different pricing plans. So for example, your free plan might have two PHP workers, whereas your highest end plan might have 20. Same with memory. Your lowest end plan, your free plan might have 64 megabytes of memory, whereas your highest end plan might be allowed one gigabyte of memory. The miscellaneous area allow you to configure certain um, plugins and themes for which we add special support. Locktivity, for example, is used to store logs offsite. So you can push WordPress actions into an offsite log. So no matter what happens to your WordPress site, those logs and that historical activity is stored where no one else can get to it. Authentication is useful when you've created your site based on a template site. Again, very useful when customers have purchased a site subscription. Your template site can have HTTP authentication enabled to prevent outside users from accessing it. But once it's copied over to a new site for a customer, you want to disable that. And of course, you know, you have options for things like backups and delete and debug logs that are present in the template site, but you don't want to have copied over to the customer site. The last section in product plans are these bash script hooks. There's a lot you can do with product plans, but obviously you can't do everything. So you're allowed to pull remote bash scripts and run them after the new site is configured. So with these bash scripts, you can do things like um, import data into a database or do additional configuration for plugins that have a WP CLI interface. So overall, you can see, hopefully you can see that these product and site plans are really, really powerful. They're, they're useful when you're creating new sites for yourselves but they're really, really useful when you're creating sites for customers or when customers are doing self-service purchases from your WooCommerce store.